Hello everyone, I'm Jess. I am an engineer working at an ecological institute and I make videos about engineering, science, and conservation. If you're new to my channel, welcome. This video is going to be about my sensor update. If you're not new to my channel and you've seen my last updates, you would know that I almost lit my table on fire with the last uh, sensor creation attempt. So here's the old sensor that I destroyed. How did I do that? I basically took this little power connector and the battery and connected the positive and the negative terminals the wrong way, which then destroyed this thing. It still works if you plug it into the computer, but I figured let's not even, let's not even try. Let's just go back to square one and restart the whole thing. So here, I didn't show you guys all of the soldering I just did for the last three and a half hours or four hours or five, I'm not even sure anymore. But what I did was I basically just connected a bunch of wires. In the ground and in the voltage in, I have this external power. So if I take the battery and I put it in there the right way, it should power the Arduino Nano. Also connected to this, these same two terminals, I am splitting the voltage. So how am I doing that with two resistors and a capacitor? The reason why I'm splitting, I'm dividing the voltage is because I wanna be able to monitor the power output. Then I basically just soldered on a bunch of other beautiful colorful wires and I made these beautiful little mountains on the bottom of my Arduino Nano and everything is just beautiful. So what are we gonna do now? I'm gonna open Arduino IDE. So ID, Arduino IDE is basically like the programming language used to program the Arduino. Never used it before, but there's this pre-made program called Blink. And what Blink does is that if you run it, it one of the LEDs on this Arduino Nano should blink. <laughs> And it does that if everything is working fine. So I'm gonna run it just to make sure everything on my Arduino is running fine. Why wouldn't my Arduino be running fine? Well, in case my soldering is actually not as beautiful as I thought it was. And yeah, who knows, maybe there's a short and I don't even know. We're gonna find out. Here we're gonna take my little Arduino device. See, look at that. Probably no short circuits. What do you think, huh? Let's go with, there's gonna be no shorts. All doing this with one hand. Okay, taking my thingy, my boober, plugging it in. <gasps> the light is on. Oh my goodness, the light is on. This is some good news. So now we're gonna run blink. So I don't know where anything is, but let's try file. Examples, basics, blank. Okay. You know, it's kind of stupid, but I'm actually looking through the viewfinder of the camera instead of directly at the TV. It's kind of dumb, right? Or not TV, screen. Okay, I think we just run this. Verify, upload, new, open, save, verify. Okay, let's try verify. Okay, okay. Okay, so there's like a little thing that says delay. We're gonna see if we can run the blink faster. So how do we stop this? Done compiling. Wait, did it not even run? I think it did. Uh, I mean, it's blinking, so I'm pretty sure it's running. What if I go, what if I change this to 250, will it blink faster? Okay, verify. It's not blinking faster. I think you have to upload it, so let's go upload. Oh, serial port is not selected. Retry to upload with another serial port. Yeah, I have no idea what this is. Okay, yeah, so it turns out this is not the Blink program and I am getting an error. So what you need to do is first go verify and then upload. But 
I am clearly having problems uploading. Then I figured out, oh, what I didn't do was actually select Nano. So now I selected it, but it still doesn't work. And I also tried both of the different processors. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my God, it's been like two hours of me trying to figure out this stupid IDE program, but I finally got it to work. So here you can see the Blink program. Look. Amazing. Basically, Arduino Nano plus a Mac is like the worst combination ever. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the speed of this blinking light. So right now you can see it's on and off every second. So now we're gonna make it go real fast. Let's change it from a thousand to 100. So this is just basically the interval. So verify, upload. Yes. <laughs> I'm actually too happy that this worked. So that means I have no short circuit. It means that I can run Arduino IDE on my Mac. You can tell it's a lot darker because I've spent way too much time doing this today. Hey guys, so it's probably been over, uh, I think it's over two weeks since I last touched the my sensor. Today what I wanted to do was play with the RTC real-time clock module. So the first thing I'm going to do is because I'm going to be supplying power to my um, Arduino Nano and then I'm going to be outputting power like a controlled voltage from the Nano to power my sensors and the real-time clock board. The real-time clock usually comes with a battery so here I have a backup one for of course when I screw up. So in the backup one you can see that so they're the exact same but in the uh da, 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 they're the exact same but in the backup one there's a lithium ion battery but the battery is kind of useless if i am going to be providing power from my arduino nano which is going to be powered from a battery so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to disable the lithium iron battery port on this RTC board. And the way I'm gonna do that is that there's this small resistor 201. You definitely cannot see it here. So here's some resistors, this one 201. If I somehow break it, <laughs> then I'm pretty sure the battery will be disabled. How to break it? I don't know, we're just gonna try. Why do I need an RTC for my sensors? So basically the idea is like, if I'm gonna deploy my sensor into the field for long term, either we're gonna have like a battery switch like on off to take measurements, but then that requires that the person is always there to go on and off on the, uh, on the sensor. So the other option is that if I'm gonna leave it in the field for longer, then I kind of want it to take samples every like 15 minutes. I don't want this thing to constantly be on and measuring and then every 15 minutes take a sample. Um, to save battery power, it's better if the entire device shuts down and then you just have this clock and every 15 minutes it will wake up the device. This is my hypothesis. <laughs> we will see if it works. It will wake up my device and then it will um, tell it to take a measurement. So first thing I'm gonna do is, yes, try to destroy the resistor on this 201. Okay, so it turns out everything I was saying about the RTC module earlier is wrong. <laughs> Why? Because you do need the battery because remember how I was saying that when you're out in the field, you wanna put your sensor to sleep and then you want the RTC module to wake it up and take a sample every like 15 minutes. But if the sensor is asleep, then how will it wake up if there's no power? So you do need the battery in the RTC module to wake. Like this thing will always be running but the sensor will be asleep. So that's 
step one of my discovery. So the battery is supposed to go back here. Second thing about my discovery is that here, this battery is a um, lithium battery, but it is a non-rechargeable battery. It's code or whatever is CR2032, um, three volts. But everything that I'm reading about online with this tiny RTC module is that it is made to have a rechargeable battery. <laughs> but I don't have a rechargeable battery. I have the battery that came with it when I bought it, which is non-rechargeable. So isn't that hilarious that my university sold me this module with a battery that is incompatible? So I have been reading, first of all, how to connect this to my Arduino, which I will tell you and then you tell me if it's wrong. <laughs> and then tell me how to do it the right way and how to modify this thing so that it doesn't send a charge to the battery so that I can use a regular battery, non-rechargeable battery with this thing. So apparently what I'm supposed to do is, so I'm supposed to cut this diode here and both of these resistors and then short this resistor right here. Don't ask me why, it's just like how the circuit diagram works out in all of these online forums. And then I will attach this to my Arduino Nano. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to pull a low amount of current. So I wanted to just use the 3.3 voltage power supply here. But then everything is telling me that that's not possible. And maybe it is possible and you guys can tell me if it is. But apparently this RTC module the way it works is that like if there's five volts, then it will enable reading and writing, which is how you take a measurement. But if it's below five volts and it's like around 3.3 volts, which is what this is running at, it's running at three volts. So when this isn't providing five volts and it's off, but this is still on because it has a backup power of three volts from this battery, it will just enable the clock. So my plan to use the 3.3 volts here apparently won't work because you need five volts on this RTC module in order to take a measurement, reading and writing. So instead of using the pin, the 3.3 volt pin, I'm gonna solder on another piece of wire on the five volt pin and attach that to here. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this RTC module and then show you what I come up with. <laughs> okay, here you can see that I actually figured out how to properly remove the resistor, which is by applying the solder iron to the soldered joints and then just like flicking the resistor around until you can get it off. And then I went to create a short circuit between one of the um, resistor joints that I removed and yeah so you see me here playing around with this like <laughs> with the tweezers trying to actually keep the piece of metal in place while I solder it on and voila okay so I finished playing around with the RTC module I'm using my tweezers here I took off a diode here I took off two resistors and then I shorted one of the resistors. And apparently this is supposed to allow me to use a regular battery non-rechargeable. We're going to see if that's the case by now connecting this to the Arduino. Okay, here very easy. I just soldered on four pins, which you can see, and then connected four wires to the power, like the VCC, the ground, the SDA, and the SCL, and then connected it to my Arduino board. Okay, so my camera died, um, but I finished uh, soldering, solder lolling off camera while I charged uh, the battery. And this is what I have so far. Now, before you say anything, these pieces, these individual joints, will not short. They are not protected with shrink tubing. So why will they not short? Because I will protect them tomorrow. <laughs> How will I get the shrink tubing onto the solder joints if they're already connected? Well, I will cut these wires, put the tubing on, shrink it, 
and then put another piece of tubing here and then solder the wires together and then cover them again with shrink tubing such as this one right here as you can see i had to cut the wire and solder it together why because i said i am going to connect the um, voltage power supply from the rtc to the 5 volt but then i just went ahead and connected it to the 3.3 volt on the arduino nano so i had to cut it off and re-solder to the 5 volt what we're going to do now is we're going to plug this actually this is what i'm going to do i'm going to make dinner first because i am starving oh by the way it's monday night and this is going to be uploaded tonight <laughs> it's tuesday morning and i'm still editing so yeah no not happening then we will plug this in and try running some sort of rtc script that i'm gonna find online and then i will update you okay it's now many many hours later and i have absolutely no desire to program or even just google and download a program to test this this crap <laughs> so instead i'm just gonna plug in the nano and listen for a short circuit and hope that nothing shorts when i look at this i think nothing will short so we're just gonna plug it in and hope and if it does then i have to restart okay so we have the one end here it's plugged in as you can see then we're taking the other end and we're just gonna plug it in and listen for a short circuit. There are no metals on the table, nothing. Uh, I'm scared. Oh my goodness. Is it working? I think it might be working. Okay. That's cool. Okay, I don't actually um, want to ruin this. <laughs> So we're gonna unplug it. <laughs> we're gonna say that that was a success. <laughs> and next time I do this, I will actually try running the RTC module. And then I will also hook up the SD card so that there's somewhere to actually write the information. And then finally, I will hook up the stability sensor to actually take measurements. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, then please subscribe and like. And if you have any comments about how to help me with my situation with this sensor, and if I did everything right or if everything wrong, then please leave a comment below.